Well, good morning. It's day six. Just left camp at 646. Pretty good, considering all that uh, occurred. And uh, no problems last night, but it was stinking cold again. And it was really cold. It wasn't freezing, but it was cold. So I definitely got to figure something out there. But the uh, first line of business today is um, I need to cross this really beautiful looking stream right here. And according to the map, there's a Netherlands just like over the little, I don't know, a couple hundred feet or something. And there's a footbridge on that one, so that must be a big one. Um, anyway, so I just have a few miles, so I'm going to have breakfast. I'll hit a lake. i got to climb basically up for a couple miles. And then I'll figure out if I'm going to have breakfast or not. It's pretty early to have breakfast, but I don't have a super long hike, so I don't want to hike, you know, seven miles and have breakfast today. <laughs> so, since I think I only have 11. So. All right, been a good morning. Beautiful day. Super nice today. But it's chilly. Hike on. Well, crap, looks like the footbridge is gone. So, somehow I'm gonna need to cross this thing. Man, this looks like this thing would be full of little trout, doesn't it? I think somewhere I can cross there. I gotta find the trail then. Kind of a hassle to start the morning crossing rivers. But uh, at least it's not icy, that would be bad. But it's not, so it's good. Well, it turned out it's not going to be that bad, actually, because I was just right there. Just walked over there. I'm on some, like, gravel stuff. I'll just cross a couple logs, and uh, then I'll be good. But how is this looking? This is what I'm going to be hiking up into this stuff. Mounds. It's going to be a pretty amazing day. Well, you might, you might have noticed I was talking in some hushed tones, especially at the beginning. And that first video, I didn't even didn't even say anything. Well, it's because I was, uh, you know, you know, I was camped above this meadow, and I I know there's more, but I saw four tents. I saw a couple more in a different area yesterday. So there's a bunch of people in that meadow, and I only saw I saw one guy kind of stirring. I'm um, outside of his tent, everybody else was inside, so I think everybody else is still asleep. Probably because it's so freaking cold. <laughs> and they know they only have a couple miles to the first lake. But, you know, I don't want to be the guy, <laughs> you know, videoing, walking through somebody's camp in the morning. So, that's why I was so hushed. But yeah, it's really cold. My fingers are, are really cold. My, my, my toes are okay, that's really good. This is nothing like it was that first night. Uh, but it was it's been the coldest since then which I was really surprised because it was it was really warm yesterday it was very comfortable even in the evening it was really nice when I went to bed I didn't even put all my stuff on I was so warm so I don't know if something happened cold front came through or what but man temperature must have just plummeted and then uh, it's just the, kind of the way it is so so I'm kind of hiking here so I can get warmed up. Hike on. So I'm not heading up here, but that, the trail to Hawkins Pass goes up this valley. And that valley looks very familiar to me, but I didn't see it all the way on this end. See, it kind of wraps around to the right, and then, then you have Hawkins Pass. But I think I remember seeing this view but from around that corner looking toward it man it's amazing amazing so uh, i was i remember the, on the map i don't think i'm going over a pass today i might be but if i don't today then for sure tomorrow because tomorrow the next day i have like a couple 16 mile days uh, i don't know so hopefully i get up super high at some point you know, I've talked about uh, trekking poles before and why I use them, you know, to help me, help my pace and help my knees and all that kind of stuff. And I use it to, uh, to, for my tent or for my tarp, important for that too. But one of the other things I haven't mentioned before is that um, I, what I love these things for is it helps me uh, not fall when I'm just looking around at the scenery. Because it's like I have four legs, 
because what I've noticed the older I get, when I take my eyes off the trail, I just start to veer. I mean, I, I don't go straight. And so this allows me to kind of look around uh, without tripping and falling, which I've never done with the tracking poles. So it's pretty cool from, the, from that perspective. So yet another benefit of trekking poles. Well, you might've noticed too, I don't have the straps on here. Most people have them. Those things are stinking heavy because they're, I guess they're supposed to, I don't know, support you or something. But man, if I'm gonna fall, I don't want these trekking poles anywhere near me because these things can break. I've seen them break on people. And then you just have like a, a rod of aluminum just sticking up or something like that that just doesn't sound good so i'd rather if i'm gonna fall just let these things fly so i can brace myself for the impact without worrying about it. i'm gonna get impaled by a broken trekking pole or something like that well these things are pretty good though i like them so i just arrived at horseshoe lake which is where i'm gonna try and have breakfast but man, I can hear two different campsites before I even got to the lake talking. It's crazy, man. Actually, some of these people I probably met yesterday. Check it out. So I'm just making my way around the lake. Now it's time for a little breakfast. Yeah. So I just, just finished my breakfast. I'm gonna take in the, uh, kind of the, the route that's gonna take me by another another lake here. It's not a small one. But I'm gonna go past a number of lakes. One of them's gonna be Mirror Lake, which I've already hit on the uh, second day of the trail. So this is where I will start to cross, just for just for Mirror Lake. I'm gonna cross the same trail, it's kinda cool. And then, then after that I'm gonna move on. I'm headed to uh, Minim Lake, which is about seven miles away from here. So, which means I'm gonna get there for lunch and that's supposed to be my final destination for the day. So, um, but there's, tomorrow they'll have a 16 miler. And there's really not a good spot to stop that I can see. So I'm not going to continue on. So there is another lake above uh, where I want to stop. Uh, that's called, uh, what's, I forget the name of it. But it's up about 1,000 feet higher, I think, or no, about 500 feet. So I might just go up there. I don't think I'll stay there, though, because it'll be colder probably. But I got plenty of time, and there'll probably be nobody up there. So it'll be really really good place to hang out for the afternoon and come down and camp and I'll have a full day tomorrow so that's the plan right now pretty relaxed you know pretty relaxed so it feels feels good but I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of missing the killer the killer hike though too but I think I'm gonna get plenty of that coming up starting tomorrow
chicken or something like that. What's going on there? I wonder if it's got some eggs or something around here. It's letting me get pretty close. What are you thinking? Hmm? Hmm? I'm going to want to keep going here. I will mess with you. Here we go. Huh. I've never seen it. Coming on to Lee Lake, looks like nothing on the map. <laughs> but it looks gorgeous. So last night, since I was in the meadow, I, I was a little more uh, serious about bear bagging. So, you know, I, I had everything except a closed bag of Fritos uh, in my, in the food bag. The Fritos were in my backpack, which was like right next to me. So, so I had everything in the Kevlar bag within the, you know, the sense sealed ops that closed up properly. Had it had tied really, really tight and everything. And then I and I just I tied it to a, to the bottom of a log, like a laid down log in the camp area. I couldn't actually see it. It's so outside the view when I was in my in the tarp. So so I kid you not, man. I don't know what time it was, right? It was already super cold and everything. And all of a sudden I felt this thing like on my pillow just go like bam, just like 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 there's like this animal, the squirrel or something, just like was running like bam, hit my pillow or something, and then like bounced off and just took off. I just I didn't imagine something like whacked the pillow. <laughs> like, I thought, well, great, there's a mouse now trying to get at my Fritos, right? Now you got to remember that in the background is that that stream, and so I was purposely in the in the evening trying to just get used to the sound of the stream. I was kind of training my mind to recognize the pattern of the stream. So if there's any kind of anomalous behavior, I would be able to recognize it and say, hey, that's not normal. I'm gonna have to get out of my tent, whatever. So, so for the next few minutes, I keep hearing these sounds like little, like little mice munching, right? I was moving my pack around, didn't, didn't nothing. It's just darn it all. There's nothing going on. It's just completely stream related, right? So then I'm trying to relax and everything. And then I hear, I swear I hear like munching sounds, like something's trying to get into my Kevlar bag, like kind of chewing, crunching kind of thing. Now I knew they were gonna be able to get in the bag or take the bag, but it, it, I figured it wasn't a bear. There'd be a lot of thrashing. So, but I, it could have been a squirrel or something like this. And I'm like, you know, I don't want those guys just messing with my bag all night. Who knows what's gonna happen? It was so cold. I'm just like, no, nah, it's just nothing going on, you know? So I just, finally, I just convinced myself, no, I'm not gonna go out, put my, you know, take my little booty things off, and it's hard to get out of the, the tarp the way it's set up. I said, forget it. So I laid in there, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. So of course, right when I get up, I have to go check it out and see what's going on, right? See, like, what's the, what's the real situation? So I look, look at the bag, nothing, completely nothing. It was just all in my head. The only thing that was real is that something whacked my pillow in the middle of the night, which is probably a good end to the story. And here's a trailhead or a trail marker, so I better check that out. All right, so I've been walking next to Douglas Lake for a little bit but it really didn't get a good shot. There was one couple guys here, but that's it. I mean, it's just incredible view, right? 
So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna show you the GPS so you can kind of see the, you can see how these lakes string together. By the way, there is a Craig Lake, which is a small lake just right, probably right about here, but we're not gonna go past that. And my pack, you know, yesterday I, my pack was the heaviest it's been on this trip. And I was really thankful I didn't have to carry, you know, four liters of water or something like that. That would have just been a disaster. I really couldn't fit everything in my pack. It was, it was overstuffed. It wasn't good. It's really hard when you resupply to get just the right amount of food. At home, you can, you can split things up, put them in little bags. It's a lot easier to do that. Well, I just had, I had too much, too much food. So what I did, one of the big weight things, I, I have a ton of bars. I really don't want to, you know, chuck bars, that kind of thing. So what I did was this morning after I put some of the nuts, because I got two bags of nuts, like half a pound each kind of thing. I, uh, so I put some of the nuts in my oatmeal for this morning and I literally just, you know, spread the nuts away from the campsite on the ground. Yeah, not a great thing to do, I know. But I don't want to carry those things because I keep my pack is too full. It's not a weight thing. It's actually a space thing in the pack. So if you the so that really sucks, right? You know, I bought stuff, chucked it. Because I know I have tons of food. Got so many bars. What they do on through through hikes, like Pacific Crest and like the, the rim trail, that kind of stuff, you'll find what they call hiker boxes. And hiker boxes are a great solution to this problem. So if you have too much food or you're leaving the trail and you don't wanna you know, bring the food with you home or, or anything, if you have, if you bought some like, some, some alcohol for your, your stove and your container only holds part of what you had to purchase, you put that in the hiker box, you put your extra food in the hiker box. You can, and then, before people actually resupply, they look what's in the hiker box. They're like, ah, oh, cool, I got some. I don't have to buy this, you know, big old bottle of alcohol for my stove, or I don't have to buy all this food because somebody left it there. And that's the way it works. It's just, it's just kind of pay forward type thing or can be. And it's a really neat way to kind of help each other out, not waste a bunch of food or supplies, that kind of thing. So, that's why I was such a bummer, but there's no way I'm carrying half a pound of nuts when I know I'm not going to need them. Just arrived at Moccasin Lake. See it down there. Starting to get in the backcountry now. After Moccasin Lake is Mirror Lake. All right, so I'm at Mirror Lake right now. Yeah. Let's see. It is awesome. Again. Now, I'm pretty sure it's Mirror Lake. I better double check that. Because the other lake uh, was pretty small. You know what? I think mm, this might be the lake I thought was the other lake. Hey, is this Mirror Lake? I don't know. I think it's the next one. What's that? Hi there. I, I think it's the next one. The next one. Okay. Maybe, uh, I think... There's one on the map called Lake. Yeah, I think this is it. Here, you guys go ahead. All right, my mistake. Mirror Lake's coming up. All right, so that's Moccasin Lake right there. And that little isthmus right there, if you remember on day two, I crossed that. And that leads up to Glacier Pass, which is actually behind the trees right here. But I'm not going that way. I'm heading toward Mirror Lake and then Minim Lake. All right, so I'm at Mirror Lake, and if you have a really good memory, you'll recognize it sitting right there, which is where I had my breakfast 
on day two. It looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? <laughs> really nice. Well, it looks like I have some fun in front of me. It's wide open, even behind these trees right here. Giant bull. Somehow, I'm gonna get out of this bull. We'll find out soon enough. So, there's a couple I was hiking with for a while there. there they live in Salem. And they're actually gonna, they're gonna hike to the top of Eagle Cap, which we can't see right now. That's that's That was the big peak behind Mirror Lake. So they have a heck of a day in front of them. So so this is where we're at. This is where I'm at right now, okay? Major, major trail junction right here. Trail's going all over, very confusing. So I'm in this big bowl. So this is my trail. So somehow I kind of go over this a pass somewhere. My guess is that it's like right there somewhere but i'm not really sure but i do have to go up and i gotta get out of here i can't just hike down to get out i have to go down and then up and over so gonna be another exciting day but i was trying to help out that couple navigating everything and i actually took a wrong turn as well it was really confusing there's like trails going all over the place right here so I started going down the Losting Canyon, which is where I came up from. I didn't notice, hey, you know, this looks like I'm going down the canyon. It didn't feel right. So I checked the GPS, sure enough. So I probably went off, I don't know. I was less than a quarter mile off, but it ticks me off, so. So, but I'm definitely on the right trail now. I'm going toward what's called Copper Gap. It's kind of a, a pass. And uh, if you remember what I just showed you before, there was kind of a copperish color, brownish color gap. In fact, I'll show you here in just a sec. That's, I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to be going. All right. So if I'm going to zoom in, see it's kind of a different color. I think that's where I'm going to be going here. So I'm on the right trail. That's where I came up from. That's the whole valley I came up from. That is Mirror Lake down there. And, and there's this cool little lake right here. I don't know if you can see, but if you look close, you'll be able to see the trail where the couple is going. And that peak up there, that's where they're going. I'm thinking, man, I maybe could have done something like that today, but I got a lot of miles tomorrow. That would been pretty cool. So hopefully there's an outlet here so I can get some water. And then I can, you know, well, I don't, well I'm going to go too fast here. That was retake. Here we go. really nice so i'm pretty much just hiking straight out of this bowl right here it's just uphill and then i'm going to turn turn to my to my right anyway now you can see that small lake and you can see the you can see mirror but what's really cool is that little range right there but i came up yesterday and that is just in between that canyon over the green and before the big ridge right there and that leads down to a lava lake What's super cool is that um, when I came in to a law lake from Joseph, I was hiking on the other side of that big range. You say, well, how did I get that? Well, because just south of Mirror Lake, I actually took a big right and hiked up out of this whole basin. And that was through, I think, uh, Hawkins Pass is what took me out of this whole area right here. So it's pretty cool how it all, I'm starting to see how it all fits together in real life, just not on a computer. Well, I missed my water source. And uh, so I thought, well, I got like a third of a liter water for the next two or three miles. And then I just came across this little tiny creek right here. So this is actually all I need is to fill up my story right here. And I'll fill this thing up about a half a liter. And then, uh, and then I'll drink a bunch and then I'll fill up again to a half a liter. And then I, then I, then I should be good then, no problem. So I am getting close, closer, I should say. But check this out, man. Look at, I, I saw this white thing, but I've never seen it so full before. Look at that. It's just like a spear coming out of the ground. Dang. That is mind boggling.
made it. Check it out. Mirror Lake. Ooh, that's the peak people are hiking up to. Right there. Oh, 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 no, that's the one. <laughs> Let's keep going, huh? And that's the other side. Which I'll show you in a second, which is just, just is, is amazing. Uh, this was a lot longer and harder than I thought. I still have like one and a half, two miles to get to the lake. That's going to be all downhill, but I'll take a little break here. Then I'll have lunch like I was planning to when I get there. Man, this view is just amazing. I mean, come on. Let's go back. Woo. Oh, so good. Wow, this is a taste of what I'm in for the next couple of days. Wow, man. And there's stuff behind the tree here too that I just can't really see the details yet. All right, so I'm on my way down. So hey, I checked the GPS and this pass is about 8,600 feet, which is right up there with the other ones. And it's actually called the Ivan Carper Pass. It doesn't show that on Gaia, but it shows that on the uh, USGS topo map, which is usually what I'm, what I'm looking at here. So yeah, that's just as high as the other ones. It was just pretty amazing. Nobody talks about this thing. I thought it was some little, you know, little spur gap or something, but no, 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 no. That, that was a legit pass right there. So better put the phone away while I start working downhill. I think there's gonna be an epic view just around the corner here though. Yeah, I was right. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, you remember that on the other one? This is all the new stuff. Man, look at the, look at the cliffs and just the sheer drop. All right, this will be a little redundant, but now I'm able to see everything. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Get ready. Wow. I wonder where I'll be going. Tonight. All right, there's the lake. First view of Mir or, uh, Minim or Minim Lake. Um, so I just, I just checked the map, and I will leave the lake going left, down the canyon, and then to the right. So I will be hiking around on the other side of this entire ridge, whatever you want to call that and then kind of join back up this canyon here a few miles. And then the car is just a few miles from that. So I don't know, man, that feels pretty intimidating. I'm gonna be hiking on the other side of this over the next like three days. Wow, that's why I have a bunch of miles the next few days. Whew. All right, hike on. All right, so I made it, made it to the lake. And I'm gonna check the elevation drop. But man, that was brutal. It was just, it was not dirt coming down. It was just rocks and pebbles and stuff like that. So that was really hard on my feet and legs and everything. But everything is okay. Nothing like is really hurting. So here's kind of the sign here. So um, you notice it says the two pen trailhead. That is where the car is parked. But we're not going that way. I'm gonna go right down the Minim River and then you know around that, whatever that range is, on the other side of the lake that I was talking about. So we're gonna go the long way, because that's more fun. I'm, I'm thinking this looks like a pretty good place to hang out for a couple of days, but I only have tonight. So I'm gonna have some lunch on the beach, put my feet in the water, relax. I'm gonna find a campsite, stuff like that. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice, nice leisurely lunch. Mm. 
might might take a dip. Drops off here pretty quick. Gets kind of muddy though, as you can see. Man, that water looks really inviting. It's not too cold either. Man. I haven't decided what to do yet. So I made a decision. I had some water. Then I decided I'm going to go jump in the water. All the things in the universe I could do, that's, that's what I decided to do. Sounds good, huh? So, how do I feel? How do I look? <laughs> I feel really good. It, that water was colder than Lava Lake. Yeah, it was uncomfortably cold. Uh, but I floated around for a little while, washed off, washed off, you know, my shorts and that kind of thing, naturally. And uh, everything else is, you know, clean. So, but I am taking precautions though. I believe in things like, you know, sun drying. So I have my, I don't know if you can see that. Is that my alpaca right there? Yeah, that needs some UVs. That's important. And uh, I'll show you some of the other techniques I use to keep sanitary on the trail. So this is a, a clothesline is what this is right here. And I have my shorts right here. Um, so those are dry. Those are washed thoroughly. And uh, sometimes I wear this uh, backpacking uh, like with my pack on. So I figured on well, my little puffy here, my Mount Bell puffy to... Uh, Get some UVs as well. So I'm actually wearing the underwear that kind of self dries that way. And my socks are getting a little sun dry as well. So lunch is up next and we have a very tasty lunch, I must say. We have uh, got some uh, typical sun-kissed tuna and we're gonna have some uh, corn chips with that. I haven't had, uh, oh, I have corn chips like every day. And then I'm gonna have some kind of a Luna bar thing here. What's on the menu? Mashup. I don't know what that is. Can't read that. I don't have my glasses on. So, but I can keep that nice and soft. That's what that's what I'm having for lunch. And I have a whole thing of scoops Fritos right here. I haven't even opened those yet. So, and I have a whole thing of nuts still. Uh, still, I got to eat up in like four and a half days or something like that. So, but hey, I am not complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. I think I'm going to try and find a place to camp. Uh, right, kind of where it's it's a little bit of rock over there. It's really hard to get water. The water, you know, it's muddy on the shore. So that, I think that's what I'm going to be going for today. Man. Yeah. I th oh, I saw some people on the trail coming down the pass, the other side, when I was going up. And they said there was nobody at this lake. That's where they came from, nobody. They said a ranger walked by yesterday and that was it. So I think I'm gonna have the whole lake to myself. <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't seem right, does it? So this little beach area right here, it's, it's I tried to do it and I, to get close-ups, but it's full of butterflies. There's probably at least a dozen, two dozen butterflies. They're really pretty. They're all along the beach. I'm not, I'm not sure where they're coming from. I can't tell, but they just kind of show up. They hang out for a while and they fly. I mean, I can see four of them, like right, right here. I don't know if you can see them or not. They're really pretty. They kind of just sit there flapping the wings and when they're ready, they just take off. And they, like they go far really quick too. Hmm. It's just about four o'clock and I must have laid down or I did and I just on the rocks right here, little pad and I was there for about an hour I think. So <laughs> this is what it's been like the whole time. It's just unbelievable. So I'm gonna go find a campsite Someplace close, not far, but probably in the woods a little bit to keep it a little warmer tonight. And uh, by the time I do that, set up camp, 
Maybe time for a little more chill time, and this going to be time for dinner. Well, it feels like I just finished lunch, though. But probably won't. Then I'll try. I try and have dinner around six. So uh, on to find a campsite. All right. So I'm at the end of the day here, and I'm just kind of winding down my chili mac with beef. Like, why would you not have beef? Anyway, that's almost ready for me to munch on. Uh, it's been quite a day. As, as usual. It was weird when I started, I was thinking, ah, I'm over being lonely, stuff like that. But uh, I'll tell you about that later, but I was just having a really nice, super peaceful, you know, relaxed morning. And I looked at the numbers and let's see, going from where I started in the valley um, up to the pass. So the, the valley was about 6,000 feet. The pass was like um, 8,800 feet. So that was about uh, 2.8 thousand foot climb to get up there. No wonder I was so tired. Dang. Um, I didn't have lunch, and lunch was when we I got back down. So um, I dropped um, 1.4 thousand, so 1,400 feet, and I felt that because it was rocky. It was uh, it was I had my trekking poles. I was using those to help protect my knees. It was pretty pretty intense. Um, so I dropped to the lake that I'm at now, Minum Lake or Minum. Nobody knows how to pronounce it. <laughs> is, uh, was it um, 7,400 feet. So I went up 2.8 and dropped 1.4. So that's pretty good. But uh, but I checked the miles, mile, mileage today like three times and it was only like 10 miles. Dang, that was super frustrating actually. I thought for sure it was at least 11. I decided not to go to that other lake because I just didn't want to, you know, stress my body more than I needed to because tomorrow I have a full on 16 mile hike, um, I do kind of cruise through a valley, so I'm hoping I'll be able to have a really good pace. It's really difficult to get a good, strong pace on most of the trails here on the Wallows. <laughs> it's just rocky, and it's all, I'm always going up and down. There's hardly ever flat, which is which is tough. So, but I wrote down a couple of highlights. So, um, the um, oh, the pass. The pass was. I love, obviously, you can see I, I love passes. It was so beautiful. And what's so neat about this area is that, and I'm looking at it now, is that it, you have not only different colors of rocks, but like different contours, like different shapes and everything. And all in one kind of panorama. And it was just, and just the sheer size was just was always startling to me. So I met a bunch of people on the trail. I think that's what why it slowed me down because I was talking to a lot of people, helping people with directions. So I have my GPS out and stuff like that. So that was a lot of time doing that. And, um, and the, the lake here, I, uh, lake is just super awesome. So I'm I'm really stoked to meet the lake. Uh, and I, another couple did come in. I actually met them on the trail. So I talked to them for a while in Vancouver, Washington. And um, so that was kind of nice talking to them. Yeah, they thought the pass was just like mind blowing as well. So that was actually pretty cool. So and and uh, and chilling at the lake was was awesome. You saw that in the, in the videos. The the I was it was just super peaceful. I took a nap. It was just it was really good. But then you know when it was time to to go set up the camp and it took me it took me over a half hour to find a campsite. There's really bad campsites area. It's just not good for camping. The, just the shape of the the of everything. And so it was it was super hard to find a campsite. So the by the time I finally found one, to actually you know get set up and everything start taking stuff out i was just like i was like overcome with like loneliness like again super frustrated i was just like ah, you know, it's like i just want to go home kind of thing so i'm sitting there in the log with my pack and then i kid you not one of those butterflies i saw <laughs> flew up landed on the log right next to me and stayed there for like a minute there's no butterflies up here. So that was, uh, that was really special. Really thankful for that butterfly. <laughs> so, but, uh, so I think that's about it. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, my stats. Uh, I got 21,000 steps and 3,000 calories. So that's pretty good. Last I checked. So at least I got some calories, but 10 miles sucks. Don't, don't tell anybody I only did 10 miles. Yeah. So that's it for the day. Um, tomorrow's going to be a different day for sure. I don't think there's any passes. Well, I didn't think that either today. Oh, that pass was named Ivan 
Carper Pass. So good on Ivan. That was a great pass to be named after. All right, that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching, and hopefully tomorrow, which I am sure there'll be multiple mind-blowing surprises, which should be super, super cool. Hike on.